I'm going to welcome our guest speaker to uh, come up on the stage and keep me company now. Uh, he hardly needs any introduction. For 15 years, Jamie Balch was the poster boy of British athletics. What's this was there? <laughs> <laughs> Setting records and uh, winning medals, of course, at all the major championships, including the 1996 Olympic Games. And we're very, very proud of everything you've achieved, Jamie. And we're very, very happy that you're here with us this afternoon. And more recently, Jamie's become more well known as an advocate of adoption and is the patron of Adopt Wales, the National Adoption Service. And who could have failed to be moved by an emotional BBC Wales documentary last year, tracing Jamie's search for his birth mother. If you didn't see it, well, this short video now will uh, give you a taste, perhaps, of what you missed, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jamie Bolt, Olympic silver medalist and former world champion, and I'm adopted. When I was um, 11 years old, I was watching Daley Thompson at the Olympics win the Olympic gold medal for the decathlon, and going, that's my dad, because he looked a little bit like me, had a little afro, and obviously I didn't have a moustache at 11 years old, but uh, I really thought Daley Thompson for a little while was my father. So I'm going to see Gemma Williams for the first time today. Um, she's going to be seeing me through the adoption pro process. What if we do manage to trace her and actually she's not in any position to accept any form of contact? I'm willing to take that risk because I think, and we all know this, like my mother could have quite easily had an abortion. Yeah. And she didn't, um, with a mixed race kid in the 70s. And, mm -hmm. and, and I just think, well, I, I really would like to say thank you. So there's only one key bit of information that I know that you're not already aware of. <laughs> she's seeing emotions, yeah. like, I'm, like, I'm like, oh. And that's regarding your birth mother's name. Okay. So I've got her name for you today. So she was Teresa Ann Mills. So she informed the social worker that the baby would be half coloured and that the father was Jamaican. Um, he was serving in the army in Germany. She was reluctant for him to be involved in any way, mainly because she now had a new boyfriend um, and the new boyfriend had offered marriage, but felt that he could not accept the baby. It was an avalanche of information. The file said I was born at 5am in the morning, May the 3rd, 1973, five weeks premature weighing just four pounds and five ounces. I was described as having light tanned appearance, medium brown hair and grey blue eyes. Well, we knew he had to get his leg speed from somewhere, so it had to come from one island, right, in the Caribbean, and it just happened to be Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder I'm quick. You know what I mean? <laughs> I had a phone call from Teresa. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I asked her if she thought she'd know what it was regarding. Um, and she said, is it regarding a little boy? Um, and I said, yes, can you tell me a little bit more? And she said, oh, my little boy called Jamie. So it was really clear that she was the Teresa we were looking for. You've got a half-sister. <laughs> mm. Her name's Jaya. Um, there is something that you need to know about Teresa. Yeah. Um, and it's really difficult for me to share it with you. Um, Teresa's actually not particularly well. Um, she was diagnosed with lung cancer in March, um, and it is terminal. And it's a lot, lot to take on board, and she really felt that you needed to know that before you met her. I'm really sorry, no, no. I just want to walk off if you don't. I'm really sorry. Please, if we just stop. Well, this is it. Um, go and see my mum. I've said it all along with this programme. I've always just wanted to say thank you, you know, because, you know, I wouldn't be here, would I? No. And uh, it, it means so much. So thank, thank you for 
doing the right thing yeah. and uh, I know that it's worked out for the best, you know? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it did work out for the best, mm. Jamie. Mm. Mm. Bye, Jamie! Bye. Bye. 41 years and uh, you get to meet your mother, you know? And you've got a half-sister, never... Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you learned a lot about him there, and uh, some of you may have seen the film. But I'll just say one other thing as I introduce Jamie Balch. He's a genuinely nice guy. Give him a warm welcome. Oh, cheers for that. Uh, thank you very much. I was almost bloody crying again watching that. I've got to stop crying every time I see it. I've only seen it about four or five times, but every time it, uh, it does me in. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today to uh, chat to you guys for the next five, ten minutes about that whole process and what went on in my life. Um, it's been a, a, a mind-blowing experience to me, really. Um, I never really thought what would happen would happen. And... Um, you know, to meet your mother after 41 years is just, you know, amazing. So to, I always get a lot of people saying to me, you know, how, how did you manage to do that on TV? How did you do that? Why did you do that? And for me, uh, the reason I could do that and I could do that comfortably was because I've, I'm, I'm very happy with my parents. There's lots of people out there who can be mums and dads, but there's not many people who can be a good parent. And my mum and dad, who didn't get to see in that, that little short clip, so if you do get to watch it on YouTube, it's still on YouTube, that actual film, um, you'll get to see how great my upbringing's been with my, with my mum and dad. Um, you know, putting myself in the public eye like that was kind of difficult, but for me, like I said, it was uh, it's something which I felt needed to do. And I wanted to go on a journey. I wanted to go on a journey and find out what it's like, you know, and I was willing to put myself out there. And when I decided to go on this journey, I was opened up to the social services. I'd never been in a situation where I'd had to deal with the social services. I'd never been in a situation where I had to really integrate with it. And the first day I met Gemma, Gemma Williams, who you saw in that documentary, um, was brilliant. Because that first day I met her, she was so, so comforting. And that footage you got to see there was the first time I actually met her. Everything you saw in that video was not scripted, it was not edited, it was what it was. So um, it was not that long lost families which you see on the other channel. This was a real documentary of uh, a, a real person. Um, but Gemma took me through that process which was just so lovely to, um, I suppose, have your hand held. And um, I think if she had been a different way, it might have been a bit of a different documentary, but I was always looking forward to seeing her. Um, she always made me feel welcome. She always made me feel almost at home, you know. Um, the day I got told, um, which you just saw that little short um, brief part then, the day I got told that my mother was terminally ill, that was, again, one take. It was not like, oh, can you say this to the camera? This was you know, um, the rawest footage you could have, I suppose, and that was my actual reaction. And I didn't know what Gemma was going to say to me that day. Um, and, you know, if you can see the response she actually, get, you know, she actually gave in that video was just amazing. You know, she, she, she kept professional through and throughout. And, you know, I don't think I could have done that. I don't think I could have done what she had done. It's down to you guys and some of you people in the room who have educated people like Gemma to go out there into the workplace and deal with people like me. And if you didn't have special people like that, then the services wouldn't really do anything, you know? But um, for me, she was just, you know, a key part of that, that program. I do get a lot of people when it got aired, which I found really funny is, uh, and this is a true story, I had hundreds and hundreds of people, thousands and thousands of people contacting me after the show uh, email, Facebook, Twitter, and mostly blokes were asking, can I get her number? <laughs> I was like, hang on, didn't you watch the programme? And, uh, you know, that's true, you know, they honestly thought, um, 
she was willing to give up her number, but that, that's not the case. I haven't given out to one person yet. Um, not yet. So, um, but no, you know, she, she is a real person. She is a person who works in the community to look after people like me who are looking for their parents, and you know, she's, she's a credit. Um, let me have a look, because I've wrote a couple of notes down here. Um, you know, to, 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 to meet your mother after 41 years is, um, is something special. And um, the adoption services for me, like I said, have, have been fantastic. Um, I can only say the only equivalent sort of thing to this is, if you can imagine me in the Olympics, uh, Olympic final, running against the USA, can you imagine how nerve-wracking that moment must have been in front of 100,000 people, most probably a billion people watching on TV. You and Thomas is coming around the track and he's just about to give me the relay button. Well, that day I actually walked into the room to meet my mother just about a minute before. Can you imagine meeting this person you've never met? Well, I actually did meet her because she gave birth to me, so I did meet her at some point. But the, the person you'd never really met after 41 years, it was the most scary moment of my life. Um, the Olympics is so insignificant with how I felt before I went into that room. The only bit of footage they didn't actually show in that video was me actually meeting her for the first time. That was something which is private and personal, but I'm going to tell you a bit of a funny story about what happened when I ran into that room, which people don't know about. Um, the door opened, I shut the door so the cameras couldn't come in, and my mother was sat about 10 metres away um, in this courtyard. And I looked at her for the first time, she was looking at me all sort of like head down, and I went, oh my God, bloody hell, that's my mother, you know? Um, but what do you do when you first see your mother, you know? What do you do? So I just went over to her and she remained uh, sat down. And the only thing I could think about doing was rugby tackling her. And I, <laughs> I don't know why, because I didn't want to shake her. Do you shake your hand? What do you do? Hello, mum. You know, what do you do? So I sort of like went in like this. And she went back in and we're, we're like in this sort of like wrestling position. You know, um, which was kind of odd and weird, but it was a lovely moment, especially when she actually mouthed the words, Jamie. And that moment for me was heartbreaking. And, we, you know, we must have been crying for about 10 minutes after that. My original birth name is Jamie, and my mum and dad have always called me Jamie growing up. And um, so to have your mother after 41 years call you by your name is kind of a, a, big, a, a bit of a big moment. But it was, it was lovely that she was willing uh, to go on the program and, and talk about it, um, which was, which was uh, really cool for me and for everyone to see that adoption is not a bad thing. Before this program, I, I, I just felt people were coming up to me getting, or talking around me, going, oh yeah, he's adopted, you know, growing up in the playground, you know, it was this sort of thing of people didn't really talk about it. And I think that program really brought out how amazing adoption can actually be. My mum and dad, um, Marilyn and Alan, who've raised me for the last 41 years because they're still looking after me because I'm still a big kid. Um, you know, they're fantastic. And for them to give you their view about how it's all been. Um, but like I say, it's, it's down to people like you who've provided these services in the community and look after people like me and for us to come to the forefront and meet people like you to help us go on our way. Another thing which has been fantastic as well is, is growing up in the playground when I was a young kid, you'd get... You know, you'd have, you'll remember all this, you'd have that form which says black, white, other. And I was always ticking other because I never knew what the hell I was like, you know. And I was always ticking, but it's lovely when you get to meet your mother and you know your blood type. You know your, the blood group. You know stuff about your mum. You know your history. You know a little bit about your heritage. So, so for me, again, it was, it was such an important story for me to get across personally because I've realised that I'm not going to be here forever. And when I'm long and gone, I wanted my children to know who their father was. And I wanted my grandchildren to find out who their father, great, you know, their, their, their granddad was. My son's 20 years old now, um, and my other son is, is 12 years old. And I, I get people saying to me, and quite a few people have said this, have come up to me in public and said, do you resent your birth mother? And I, and I look at them quite oddly, because I find it very a strange question um, to ask. My mum was only 19 years old when she had me. 
A mixed race kid in the 70s is a no-no. We all know it wasn't a very good move for her to do. Her mum and dad turned her back on her. My birth father went away. She was on her own. She could have had an abortion and she didn't. She decided to have me carry her in her stomach for nine months and then give me up. She knew what plan she needed to do. And to me, that's why I say very, thank you very much for having me back in the 70s when you know, she could have easily have, have done something else. Um, so, I, um, I'm, everyone, it's kind of odd because um, people uh, don't come up to me anymore and say, oh, you're the runner, you're the runner. The people come up to me and go, I saw your, your program, you were adopted, weren't you? And I'm like, yeah, I also used to run as well, you know? <laughs> I used to run quite fast. Um, so, I'm going to leave you on this one little story about my past, which is my athletics. And... Um, a great moment, uh, 1996 Atlanta um, Olympic Games. Um, we had made it to the final of the 4x400 meter relay. Ewan Thomas for Wales is on first leg. You remember Ewan Thomas. Myself on second leg. Uh, Mark Richardson on third leg. Roger Black on fourth leg. We're in lane five in the Olympic final in America, in Atlanta, in the, uh, and, and America are in lane four. 100,000 people, a billion people watching on TV, the race starts. You and Thomas is running around the track for Great Britain, and he's running around the track, and he's running around the track, and all I'm thinking is, don't drop the bloody baton. <laughs> I won't really right. So, Eddie, he comes up the home straight, and he gives me the relay baton. This is a true story now, right? The Olympic final. I'm running round for my life now. I'm running round in lane five in the Olympic final. I, whoo, whoo, going for it. In lane four, the American runs past me round the first bend. As he runs past me, he goes, Ah, oh, yeah, baby. Ah, oh, yeah, baby. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I I'm running like that. <laughs> anyway, we get to 300 metres to go, and he's about that far ahead of me. And you can't disrespect the Welsh, can you? Don't disrespect the Welshman. <laughs> I learned that last week on Carry Out That Life. So I, I, you know, but don't, we won't talk about that. Because I haven't learned any bloody well, so I don't know any well. It's a good program, though. Watch it tonight, 8 o'clock, S4C. I'm not plugging it. <laughs> anyway, he's this far ahead of me, and I thought, don't disrespect the Welsh. He's the American. We're in Atlanta, in America, for the final of the Olympics. I thought, I'm going to get him now. So I ran as fast as I could. So I ran past him, meep, meep, like Roadrunner. <laughs> And if you, if you ever see video footage of it, you can actually see me, Marvel Lamb, me, me, like, <laughs> see the American Lamb. But, um, so that is the highlight of my athletics career. And I love it. Thank you very much. <laughs>